shows that make you laugh, shows that make you think, music that moves you. It can only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Welcome to The Actor's Choice, where the actors and actresses have a chance to talk about themselves and their careers. Join us now for the next hour as we explore the marvelous industry of acting by actors and actresses from today's exciting show business world. And now, direct from Hollywood, here's your host, Ron Brewington. Hi everybody, I'm Ron Brewington and welcome to The Actor's Choice. As we're being brought to you today, our new sponsor, Photography as an Art, Harvey Brandman, Master Photographer at 1307 North San Fernando Boulevard in Burbank. My guest today is a multi-talented person. He's a veteran theater critic, a writer, and an attorney. Uh, so let's get to it without playing around. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ron Irwin. Ron, Thank you. good to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you here today. And uh, my first question is, please define what is a theater critic? <laughs> Uh, somebody looking for work, but uh, <laughs> no, I think a theater critic, if, if he or she is doing the job right, is somebody who can be fair, reasonable, analyze the performance in a way from the perspective mm -hmm. of, is this going to entertain the audience? Okay. Because I think the number one job of any performance is to entertain. Right. So they call it the entertainment industry for a reason. And uh, that's, I think, what the entertainment uh, or f theater critic's job number one is, is to decide viewing the play what you know what if it's going to hold the audience if it's going to deliver on their promise and that's about it okay so now we're on the same page with it what made you become a theater critic my daughter be more specific please. okay very simple my daughter <laughs> some years ago did the thing that a lot of daughters do especially in this city yes ask for money <laughs> yeah well that too that came a little later but no she said hi daddy I'm gonna be an actress and I said oh okay so I started finding ways that I could, I mean, taking her to auditions and stuff. She got in a lot of plays, and she did some uh, screen work. And uh, I decided, well, you know, since I'm going here anyhow, I might as well become a critic. And, uh, of course, I didn't write reviews about her. <laughs> that wouldn't have been fun. But that was it. I mean, I started getting involved in the whole process, and mm -hmm. uh, that's what really got, what got me going. And then I found out that I was actually enjoying it. Wow. Wow. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I got to tell you how I met this guy uh, about a year or so ago. It was at a performance of uh, Ted Lange had a play over the Odyssey yeah. Theater, and I was there as, uh, enjoying it along with a whole lot of other people. By the and way, that gave five stars to that one. I hear you. I hear you. And I happened to see this man, this gentleman right here standing there, had on a Marine Corps insignia. Got my attention when he did that. Since okay. I'm a Navy veteran myself, he's a Marine. We're, we're in the same department. I thought I'd walk over and introduce myself to him. And that's how I met this guy, and it was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Besides being all the nice things. He, he's also my publicist, so he does a lot of different things <laughs> for us. I, let, let's put the word out there. Let folks know who you are. Indeed. Okay. Indeed. Um, how do you prepare, Ron, for reviewing a play? Basically, uh, show up, awake, sober, <laughs> and uh, pay attention. I, that, that's about it. I, in fact, I'll tell you this. I make a point okay. of not really reading any of the material that their publicist gives me beforehand. I don't want to go in there with a preconceived idea of anything. I want to go in there like a typical audience member, sit down and watch and see what comes to me off the stage. Mm -hmm. and then afterwards, I might want to look up some material about what different people's roles and what they're doing. But I don't want to go in there with a pre any preconceived notion whatsoever. Okay. Do you so. talk to the actors? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes after the show. Not uncommon that you, you know, especially mm -hmm. since most of the reviewing is done opening night and you, right. you get to chit chat with the people. Mm -hmm. So you really, how much research do you do on the actual play itself? It depends. If some, sometimes it's pretty obvious right, right from the get-go, and in particularly uh, if it's something that you may have seen before. Like I remember seeing Cabaret about a year ago at uh, uh, Pantages, and I had seen it a little bit before that in New York with Joel Gray. So I kind of had a heads up on what the play was supposed to be about, oh. and uh, not a lot of research done with that. But then sometimes, yeah, you want to look into, okay, well, what, what was the story about? Why? Why did you follow this particular path? And sometimes that reveals a lot to you, so it's interesting. But the number one thing that I'm looking for always is entertainment value. That to me is priority because my responsibility is not to the director, the producer, or the actors. My responsibility is to the people who are in the audience. Thank you. Because it's your opinion that we're actually seeing about a play. 
Right, and whether you agree mm -hmm. or disagree isn't important as long as I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. Because if you happen to think that every time I say a play is bad, you love it, mm -hmm. and every time I say a play is great, you hate it, then, right. then you know what to do. So <laughs> I, know, I know I used to be a film critic, and I know okay. sometimes some, some of us would get, get these quotes, and you know, it's kind of asinine when you see someone say, gee, it's in January, best play of the year. I mean, it's in January. No, that's you know. the publicist gone run amok. Exactly. And uh, you know, that's not it. It's a show. It, it is what it is. And mm -hmm. you know, I, and the other thing too is I, I have a high level of respect and regard for the bulk of actors out there because they work hard. It's not an easy gig, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, just to get the job is difficult. And then if you're going to what a lot of the shows, people think of L.A. as, you know, Tinseltown, movies, film, television. Well, yeah, there's plenty of that. And there's like 400 stages, too. Yes, it is. And, you know, not all of them pay in sag after minimums. No. In fact, a good percentage of them don't. And yet they're out there because they love the art. They love to entertain. They love to perform. And, of course, they have aspirations of moving up. Mm -hmm. um, and when they do a really good job, I think that should be saluted. Do you remember the first play that you reviewed? Oh, no, honestly, I don't. It was okay. a long time ago. Most likely, mm -hmm. if I'm going to guess, it was somewhere on Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Monica Boulevard, okay. Because, again, like you say, this is a town. It's a movie town. But there are, what, four, you said 450 productions? About, about. Yeah, and I've been mm -hmm. to most of them. And there's sometime I went to one in a factory. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they'll, they'll put any place where there's a stage. If this, the, the, this. A stage right here could probably put on a show if they wanted to. I mean, and I don't mean TV. I was just, okay. the, if the, if you can find any place where you can park a couple of people as an audience, mm -hmm. they're going to have somebody out there to entertain you. Yeah. It, it's just it's weird. It's wild. I love it. Okay. What about the use of reviews that you do to sandbag a play with a negative buzz? You ever get into that? You see it all the time. You ever do that? I've only written maybe three scathing reviews out of thousands. Okay. because they worked really hard to earn it. I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of effort to get a really harsh review from me because mm -hmm. there's redeeming value in almost anything. But there, there was one in particular that where the, a predominant theme in the scene was a woman was sweeping dead babies off the stage. Oh, and I yeah. said, excuse me, I failed to see any of the dramatic value in this. There was no point. There was no message to it at all. It was just weird. It was weird for weirdness' sake. Mm -hmm. And that was, I'm sorry, that doesn't entertain. That doesn't appeal to me. And it was rather disgusting. Mm -hmm. So I shared my opinion about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, as you know, there's a beginning. By the way, they closed about a week later. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 The word got out there. Yes. I hope so. Yeah. But it, it's rare because, again, I, I appreciate that people work really hard. And sometimes even when you work really hard, you might miss the target a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know. As you know, there's beginning, middle, and end of a play, starting with, did the, did the play start on time? That's one of the main... They never have. I've never seen a play ever anywhere in New York or here or West End start on time. Wow. Never. They're at least five minutes late. It's tradition. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I'm just saying. <laughs> What's your favorite L.A. theater? Oh, Pantages, because I'm a spoiled brat. <laughs> it's a beautiful <laughs> theater. You know, the Pantages is actually larger than pretty much every theater in Broadway. Mm -hmm. 2,700 seats. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Yeah. And they, they have a pretty good tradition of putting on only, you know, top-end shows. Okay. They prepare a seat for the critics. Where, where's your special place that you like to sit in the theater? I, wherever they put me, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And I've been anywhere from front row center to the balcony. Mm -hmm. It just all depends on what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, I went one time a little while ago with my granddaughter to see Newsies. Uh, and I don't know whether their PR guy was just trying to be nice to me or what, but we had front row center. And my granddaughter turned around about six rows back. She saw all of her Disney stars from TV. She went, How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing there? Down front, yeah. Yeah, and then next week, yes. you know, it's the balcony, but whatever. Hey, whatever. You know, <laughs> I've had that happen for a long time when I was doing music. You, didn't, you would get free tickets. They yeah. don't do that too much now anymore. They cut back on that. Well, you know, it's hard to get a reviewer to pay to watch the show. It is. Yeah. Yes, it is definitely. You know, theater flavor. Okay, we're on the West Coast. Okay. You've been to the East Coast. Yeah. How do you compare the two? Oh, in terms of theatrical. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's there's, there's a definitely a slightly different vibe, but again, it depends on the show. One of the things out here, I never went to any of the small theaters in the, in the East. So I don't have a direct comparison. I mean, I've been to some of the Broadway venues. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually got to get on stage at where they did Lion King, but not during the show. 
you know, just had a, a friend of a friend that said, hey, come on, I'll show you what it looks like. And it was like really interesting. Yeah. Um, but there, there's a different vibe. There's a different flavor. But it's not wildly different, I don't think. And But here, again, with all, so many little theaters, because most of the people who come out here, they want to be entertainers of some form. Radio, TV, th stage, they don't care. Just put me out in front of an audience. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And so they have a little bit more of a, a, a I don't know, a drive maybe. Yeah. So well, that's about it. I wouldn't say that it's wildly different. Have you ever walked out of a play? Yes. Tell us about it. Well, I mean, there's two ways of walking out of a play. First of all, I don't walk out in the middle. Mm -hmm. I walk out at intermission. But uh, there's two reasons I'll do it. One is because I already know the play, mm -hmm. and I've got enough new information to write the review, and so why bother? I'd rather go home and watch TV or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen it. I mean, I know what yeah. the play's about. In yes. the first act, you go, okay, I see what who's doing and everything. I, I have enough to material. And the other one is like, I don't want to be here anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's only happened once or twice. Okay. Because usually if I walk out, it's only because I've been there, done that, seen it, and I have enough information. I'm here to review the play. I'm not here to sit to the end. Gotcha. Okay, so it's a J-O-B. Gotcha. And when the J-O-B is done, I leave. As you know, there are a couple of uh, critic groups here in town. Yeah. Uh, are you a member of either one of them? Not, not much of a joiner. I am a member of the LA Press Club, but that's mm -hmm. about it. Okay, okay. Uh, what advice would you give to a potential film critic, a th theater critic? I'm sorry. Well, uh, learn a little bit about what the art involves. Mm -hmm. uh, learn how to be honest with yourself and your readers, because that you want to be critical. That you have to be honest. If, you, if you're there just to be an extension of the PR arm of the show, or to get a free ticket, or to get your free yep. ticket, mm -hmm. which you know you earn that free ticket. Yes. It isn't really free. Um, and then you know. Do a little bit of research on your own. Start reading other reviews. See what, you know, the people that are, are published and see what they're writing. And whether you agree or disagree, at least you'll get an understanding of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then go for it. Mm. You know, it's, it's not rocket science, but no. there is some talent involved. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ron, besides being a critic, being a nice guy, you're also a writer. You're an attorney. You're a busy guy. Well, actually, I was an attorney. I, mm -hmm. I left my bar back in Illinois, and I said, I'm not taking another bar exam, so screw that. Mm -hmm. And I, <laughs> I, I I came out here, and I did uh, talk radio for a while. I had a ball mm -hmm. doing that and uh, started writing books a while ago and uh, enjoyed doing that because, you know, it's a way to reach the world and have some fun. Mm -hmm. How many books have you written so far? Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Some of which are actually readable. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Can you give us a name of some of them? Well, I think one of the ones that I like the most, it's one of the simplest, easiest, and smallest ones. It's called Manfred Moose Flies to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And I used to fly a lot to Asia because I had some business dealings over there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I noticed was that sometimes parents didn't quite know how to make their kids behave properly on an airplane. Yes. So I figured if I made Manfred Moose fly properly, it could be inspirational to the children. And it's a, it was illustrated by a man, Scott Hanna, it was his name. He did the illustrations. I did the writing. And it's a picture book, great for kids ages 2 to 10. Mm -hmm. And it just shows the whole process of tra any kind of international. I picked Hong Kong, but it could be anywhere. It could be, you know, L.A. to London, whatever. It doesn't matter. But, you know, how, how to prepare your family correctly. Every flight crew member that saw that book wanted it because they wanted the kids to see that. Mm -hmm. It's Manfred Moose flies to Hong Kong, and you, you know, <laughs> should consider it. It's like, I don't know, six bucks or something. Yeah. But it's a lot of fun. It's a cute little book, story, little, you know, little storybook mm -hmm. for, for children. Hmm. Geezer was, and the Kid? Geezer, oh, Geezer and the Kid. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that was, I took my Cardinal aircraft mm -hmm. and put my then 11-year-old daughter next to me in the plane, and we flew around in the great southwest of America, and it's basically just a travel dialogue. It's a, a diary of what the things we did. Mm -hmm. We went to Durango. We went to uh, uh, Cayenta, which, and then we went up to Monument Valley, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you think, uh, for example, the Grand Canyon is great, it is, but you need to go to Cayenta. And we did it in an airplane, which how much better is that? And then we got met at the Cayenta airport, all one runway, by a Navajo princess who took us to a hotel. I mean, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's in the book, Geezer and the Kid, I'm just mm. saying. It's just kind of, we just did it for fun. Mm. And then my daughter, was she, she was really building her acting at that point. We mm -hmm. stopped in Durango, and she, we saw a theater. 
And she's like, yes, yes, I can get out of the airplane. I want to. And, and she ran into one of the, the actors, and the actor took her in, showed her around, and she's ready to audition. I'm like, no, we got to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I see the title of one of your book was The FAA Will Kill You. Oh, yeah. Well, after 45 years of flying experience, what I discovered was there's some really severe inconsistencies with the way the FAA deals with things. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if, yeah, I don't even want to get into that, but it, there, are, there are issues that you should, as a, if you fly mm -hmm. as a passenger, never mind as a pilot, that's a different issue, but right. if you fly as a pilot, you should be somewhat aware of what the regulatory agencies are doing mm -hmm. that aren't always the smartest thing to do. No. So that's, that's, that's what that book was about. I mean, if a wing falls off, you know, it's going to well, be Well, if the wing day. falls off, that's usually a maintenance issue, and yeah. you know who to blame. But oh, yeah. And, and if the wing <laughs> falls off, it's pretty much... Bad day. Uh, it, it is, but yeah. it's not going to last long, so... Okay. You brought along a couple of books with you today. We would like to talk about them, for, uh, but we'd like to take a break for a commercial, as okay. I said. we got a new sponsor, and by the way, if anybody out there would like to sponsor us, you want to stay on the air, uh, just send up, get in touch with me, and we'll be sure to make sure to get a commercial on the air for you. So here we go with our first commercial for our new sponsor. The studios of Harvey Brandman Photography as an Art are proud to offer a $100 discount off any photo package for you or your family valued at $300 or more. A Harvey's been around in the business for nearly a quarter of a century, uh, and you can get this opportunity right now. So give him a call today at 818-954-9294. That's 818-954-9294. You'll be very glad that you did. And by the way, tell him that you heard about this offer right here on The Actor's Choice. Okay, all right. So now, back to our guest, theater critic, attorney, and writer, Ron Irwin. Ron, just before the break, we mentioned one of your books, Live, Die, and Live. Again. Again. Yeah. Okay. December 18th, 2012. Go for it. 5.30 in the afternoon, I pushed back the chair from my desk. I stood up. I was feeling fine. And then I couldn't breathe. It wasn't I was congested or coughing. I couldn't breathe. And it hit me, because I am a genius, it hit me that I had a medical issue. And I reached for my cell phone, and I managed to get 911 in as I fell face first to the floor. Because when you don't breathe for a minute, you're gone. You're out. And I just, the final voice I heard that day was 911, what's your emergency? And me being the perpetual smart aleck, mm -hmm. I wanted to say, but I couldn't because I was out. My emergency, honey, is I'm dead. You know, you need to come over here and fix this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the AMTs found me, but they did. And they got me over to the hospital. My family was, my wife was on her way to visit her family in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. She had no idea. My kids were out doing some stuff. They came home nine o'clock at night. Where's dad? Yeah. I mean, this I learned afterwards. I had no recollection of anything. I was out for a couple of weeks in a coma. And when I got all done with it, they said, well, congratulations. Uh, you have heart failure, diabetes, and oh, by the way, you're really obese. And that's probably what brought all this on you. Which is why, in the book, I make a suggestion that if you're a pudgy person, you need to unpudge, <laughs> unless you like the idea of dropping dead. Okay, right. it's, just, it's just a thought. Yeah. Um, and so that, I really got motivated with that. And I also something very, very, very powerful came from that experience. And that was, for the first time in my adult, my life, period, mm -hmm. I actually felt the true essence of familial love. I had never completely had that embraced before. Really? Yeah. I mean, my family when I was a kid was, you know, one of the, it was not Ozzy and Harriet, okay? I'm just saying. Uh, Mom was a drunk. Dad was a drummer. Not that the two are connected, but in any event, um, it wasn't real pretty. And, you know, I, I, I left home at 11. I did a lot of things. I joined the Marine Corps. And, we, you know, we can kid about Marines and Navy and whatever, but we know darn well that no matter what military service it is, isn't exactly the warm family experience that you're looking for. I'm just saying. So... You know, all at once, though, I, I, from literally in my coma, I could feel the presence of my family. And that energy, not the doctors, not all their junk, but that energy is what brought me back. Mm -hmm. Okay. On day two, you, of course, you were out. You didn't have oh, a lot yeah. of things going on. Yeah. You write about it in your book. Uh, what happened on day two? 
Day two. Yeah, day two. You were out, like a, but you wrote it in your book exactly what happened that you can. You mean the, the doctor's practice? Oh, oh yes, that back guy. To that yeah. day two, yes. This is one of the reasons why I don't think they're worth anywhere near what they get paid. Um, <laughs> this uh, rather obese doctor came in and told them. He's my, obese. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And told my family, um, you better find him a home because if he survives, he will never walk again. Wow. This is why today I walk 13 miles a day. Because yeah. with each step, I remember him and knowing that his prognosis was really stupid mm -hmm. and uh, it was really unnecessary. And, and really what I did was recognize I had to take control of myself and, you know, maybe a few less pizzas. I lost 140 pounds because that was way too much for my heart to handle. And, wow. you know, but he was wrong. Wow. I, I made, a, made that a, a, a goal, was to prove him completely wrong. How heavy had you gotten in life? I got up to 315. <sighs> wow. Yeah, you know, I walked down the floor and the building shook. It was not good. Mm -hmm. No, a little better, a little better, a little bit better. What do you think? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously. Yes. I mean, that, that, yeah, that was very inspirational. Wow. So, so that, was, that was the only medical thing he did that was smart, was be mm -hmm. wrong, and mm -hmm. let me know it. Okay. So they took you to St. Joseph's Hospital in Burbank? Yeah. And uh, you spent how many days there? 26. 26 days. 26 glorious days. It was the best day of the day you got out, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember the night before I had actually recovered sufficiently. I walked out to the nurse's station and I said, I have a note for my chart. She said, what's that? I said, I'm leaving tomorrow. It wasn't, I want to, it's I'm leaving tomorrow. So if your uh, attending physician wants to come chat with me, that's fine, but I'm leaving, just mm -hmm. so you know. What did you learn from this experience? Uh, don't be fat. Okay. Uh, take care of yourself. Uh, pay attention to your physical well-being if you enjoy living because, I mean, we're all going to die, but I'd rather do it at 95 than 65. Mm -hmm. You know, I've you know, got 30 more years to annoy people. That's fun. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Okay. And also you might want to get some... Medicare supplement insurance, just, uh, just, uh, <laughs> just in case, just in case. The irony of it is, I was, I'm a VA qualified, <laughs> they didn't want to take me over there, which is probably a good thing. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Well, the beautiful thing about it is that with, with insurance, you don't have to worry. It's not about for you, it's for the family, so. You know, the yeah, family, yeah, yeah, yeah. The family. The actual experience itself, uh, you, you had, as we were talking about earlier in the green room, one of the things that came about was you out for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, no oxygen to the brain. Mm. What, is that, what did that do to you? Oh, delusions were wonderful. Mm -hmm. I can remember some. There was one in particular that mm -hmm. I remember very vividly because it kept repeating itself, and I have no idea why. None of it made any sense. My son and I were sitting in a room in Boston, Massachusetts, and I kept saying, can we please get out of here? I want to go to the Holiday Inn and get a Widmer beer. Now, two things. Number one, I had no interest in the Holiday Inn. I never had a Widmer beer. Mm -hmm. So why the hell this is this going through my brain? I don't know because it's messed up. That's why. But yeah, that was that was that, that is similar s delusions. Mm -hmm. There was another one, and I think you may have some experience with this particular one. Okay, I was sitting in a room above an entryway into a room where people were being brought in because they were taking classes and told that if they just paid this money and took these classes, they would become successful actors. And I knew this was a, a scam, mm -hmm. and I was trying to scream at them, no, 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 and I couldn't talk. I couldn't wow. make a sound, and I was being tied to a chair. And I was going, don't do it. Right. It was all delusional. How old were you at the time of this, of this experience? That would have been 67. 67. I was a kid. Yeah. But Jay, I would think that. But you learned a lot out of it. Well, yeah. You know, sometimes <laughs> when you survive stupidity, you can learn from it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You mentioned a walk event that you walk 13 miles, but can you tell our viewers about what you do oh, on a regular time? Yeah, well, every year, just to completely celebrate this, I on a particular route, I walk from Harvey's store in Burbank to right across the street from the Pantages, the Delphine restaurant in Hollywood, 14.2 miles. On my birthday, it's called the Hollywood Health Hike, and I invite anybody and everybody that would like to join me. You don't have to buy a t-shirt, you don't have to pay a registration fee. If you want to have lunch at the Delphine, that you got to pay for because you didn't volunteer to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. And we leave at 8, 0800, 0800, 8 o'clock a.m. You're talking to Yeah, every, on, on the day, 
Uh, this year it's actually one day before my birthday because it's a Sunday. I didn't want to do it on a Monday. Mm -hmm. But uh, April 29th, and all you have to do if you want to do it, just do it. And just let me know so we know how many people are there and just send it a note to uh, hello Ron Irwin right. at gmail.com. That's right. it. And just say, yeah, I want to go for a walk. And mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. We have a blast. We've had Johnny Crawford on the walk. Johnny Crawford. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we've had, yes. yeah, we've had a lot of... Um, People on the walk. So, <laughs> if if you're in, if you're you're trying to get to know somebody, you know, in the biz, it right. probably wouldn't hurt you either. Not to mention the fact that it could help you stay out of St. Joseph's, yeah. which is the whole point of it. Right. Get mm -hmm. your health in the position because if you're not healthy, you're not going to be around to enjoy it. Right. You're not going to be there. What date this year are you going to have it? April 29th. We're coming up fast on April. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's right after I get back from Europe. You going to Europe? Uh huh. What you going to do in Europe? I'm going to do what I think is extremely important. The most valuable lessons in life are learned by travel. Okay. And I'm taking my wife, my daughters, my granddaughter. We're all going to London, Paris, Brussels. Um, oh, yeah. She's staying wait in the minute. same hotel. Yeah, Cologne. Wait a minute. <laughs> I, I got to do this. Can I do this? Cologne. In Cologne, at this hotel. Anyhow. Hi. Did you see that? Cologne? Anyhow. <laughs> well, it's, oh, it's the hotel. It's the Art Hotel, mm -hmm. Art Hotel, which I think is pretty funny. And you can see some of the artwork there. Yes. But it's really a fun place. And that's just, in, you know, we, we have other hotels we're still in the process of getting nailed down. But, you know, they're good people. Then from Cologne, we're going to go to Paris, from Paris to Reims. Okay. And then Reims, of course, is Champagne country. Yes. So I'm going to make sure to bring some boxes and things, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then from Reims, we're going to go back to London and home. Okay. How do people get in, get in contact with you for the walk? Oh, well, again, just send an email to hello, Ron Irwin mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Just hello, R-O-N-I-R-W-I-N, at mm -hmm. gmail.com. And just say, I'm interested. Just, again, there's no cost. We're not trying to make money off of this. I do have a T-shirt, but I buy for myself. And right. If you want it, you can buy one. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. I've just been doing it every year. I have a T-shirt with a different pattern, a different point on it every year. Mm -hmm. um, and, again, that, but who cares? Yeah. The whole idea is just to do the walk and have the fun. We talk while we walk. Uh, we get to see a lot of interesting sites. We leave Burbank, we walk through Glendale, and then along Los Feliz, and through by Griffith Park and the observatory, and then come on down Western and hang a right on Hollywood Boulevard. And next thing you see, the big W Hotel, and then you see the Pantages, and then finally you can rest your legs wow. and take a break. Mm. And uh, by the way, there's a train station right at the yes, W, yes. so you can get home. <laughs> <laughs> Same way you came, right? Uh, the, the media, of course, is going to get press releases and information about this. Oh yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. I have put out press releases, and, uh, you know, yes. it is what it is. Right. What's your goal this year? How many people want to get? I, You know, a million would be fine. Two would be fine. I, it, Again, I don't care. The only thing, I will say this. Mm -hmm. Senior chief. <laughs> I keep inviting my former Marine Corps buddies to show up, and they keep uh -oh. not showing up. Oh, no. And I'm thinking, <laughs> we got a whole new Marine Corps that's got just a little light in the loafers, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just... I'm just saying, I mean, if there are any Marines watching, <laughs> would you please tell your commandant, send a couple guys. Was, we could have road guards, right? Mm -hmm. we, could out there. we can know what that is. But mm -hmm. <laughs> we could. And, and I do what a great recruiting opportunity. Right, great opportunity. Yeah, see some, yeah. Guy, some guy in a Smokey the Bear hat, he could be walking next to us, hollering at us. It'd be perfect. Yeah. Give me 50. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't think so. When I get to the hotel, we'll talk about it, okay? <laughs> Ron, well, the other book that you brought with you today oh. is this one right here, 5150, the book. Yeah. Um, tell us about that book. That book is, is a little interesting. Tell us about an experience you served when. Well, I was in Vietnam, 66, 67. Okay. But what really got me going on this book, I, I managed to do what most veterans, I think, do, and that's purge it. Mm -hmm. Right? He, he's like, okay, it happened. Now let's move on. Yeah. Uh, and, but last September, I went to Miramar to see the air show, because I love air shows. Oh, I love yeah. flying. Mm -hmm. And we were brought into a hangar and given a little pin for commemorating our service, which was nice. But then I walked outside and I saw an A-4 Skyhawk jet, not that looked like one I saw in Vietnam, one that was in, in Vietnam. Vietnam. Gotcha. It had the right ID number, the right tail ID, mm -hmm. and the whole thing. And I'm like, oh, my God. And suddenly it just went, wow. It just rushed into me. I got home. I started working on a book because I... I, I there, there are realities that came out of that experience that, uh, that I think need to be revisited because I have a think mm -hmm. we seem to as a nation have a tendency to kind kind of repeat things sometimes and mm -hmm. that aren't too bright and uh, I think like Vietnam in my opinion wasn't terribly bright 
I think 20 years, 3.2 million Vietnamese dead, 58,000 Americans dead, tens of thousands of others wounded, injured, and hurt, and for what? Yeah, it wasn't even a war. What? Yeah. What, what happened? Yeah. Well, who, who benefited? Ho Chi Minh didn't even benefit. Yeah. I mean, he died shortly after. He's like, okay, thanks, you know. Oh, yeah. they, they named Saigon Ho Chi Minh City, so yeah, he's got a city name. But I don't think there was, there was a benefit of none to yeah. anybody. And yet, but a lot of dead people. Yeah. And, and for what? But that being said, mm -hmm. if you read the book, and I know you have, mm -hmm. there's a lot of humor in it. Yes, it is. There's a lot of humor because I'll tell you what, the biggest drug to get rid of anxiety and pain and depression is humor. Right. That's the best drug. There's even a little story in there about a doctor who decided to give me a medical solution that didn't yes. work out really well. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, mm. you, I was had two weeks of told, people ask about, you know, oh, did you, uh, did you do drugs in Vietnam? Only what was prescribed by a Navy doctor <laughs> and damn near killed me. <laughs> but hey, I was enjoying it. Mm. Now you spent 13 months in the Nam. 13 glorious months defending wow. I don't know what. Thank you for your service to your country, sir. Thank you. Well, you know, don't thank me. The book is seven ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, by the way, I will mention that I have made a pledge, and I'm keeping my pledge. Yes. <laughs> Twenty percent of the proceeds go to help veterans. Okay. Split evenly between the Vietnam Veterans of America and the VFW. Okay. So that's I'm serious about that. Any anything I have, any of my books, right. if if you were to buy them, twenty percent goes to help veterans because there's a lot of veterans, and I know you know this, oh, that yes. aren't as lucky as you and I. Yes, we came out okay, right. relatively speaking, and there's a lot of guys out there that are needing needing right. some help. Some that are homeless. Some that yes. need mental help. Some that need physical yes. help. Yes. And I think you know if we as a nation feel that it's okay to draft somebody and put them in harm's way, then we as a nation need to help them when they need it. Yes. So that's what that's about. And I don't make speeches like that much, but here yeah. we are with a former naval petty officer guy. Senior chief petty officer. <laughs> but you know, as you know, with the veterans, there are World War One veterans still oh, living. Yeah. Yeah. World War Two veterans still living. Korea. Oh yeah, a lot but of them. Then there's Vietnam. There's something unique about the Vietnam veterans. Well, it was uniquely stupid. Okay. I, I, I really think so. Because even Korea, you could see there was a certain point to it, though we kind of failed to achieve it. But nevertheless, there was a certain mission there that made sense since China was sort of moving into Korea. Mm -hmm. And we said, no, 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 no. But, you know, there were some issues with that war, too. World War II, I mean, we were invited in by some people that decided it would be fun to blow up Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we said, okay, that's it. Now we have no options. We're in. Yes. Um, World War One. I, I honestly, I don't know enough to make a comment on that, but mm -hmm. but now, but now, I mean, remember, was it about three months ago, a, a, a group of soldiers were on patrol in some tiny African country and got taken down by some insurgency of some sort, uh, I don't know, ISIS or whoever mm -hmm. the group de jour is, and they're like, why are they there? Yeah. yeah. What the heck are they doing there? Yeah. You know, it just, I'm sorry, I have a problem with that. I have another problem, too. There's a lot of people who get out of going to Vietnam in places like that. Well, in the good old days of mm -hmm. Vietnam, we still had the draft. Right. And we had guys that burned draft cards and said, hell no, I won't go. And mm -hmm. uh, one of them used to be a prize fighter. Mm -hmm. Slowed down his career a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he did okay. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I, I thought, oh, you know, come on, I've been to a lot of them, you know, Fourth of July parades and stuff. I, you do the right thing, right? Right. Well, I believe that the president is trying to get a special military parade going. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're yeah. not going to go down there. Yeah. What's that cadet bone spur or something like that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, seriously, are you kidding yeah. me? I mean, yeah. come on. Let's not do the fake glory. The movie, 1517, right. to Paris. Which just came, it was just coming out. Yeah, right. Just came out. Uh -huh. You saw it? No. Here's my review. Go see it. Okay. Now, most people okay. won't know what they're looking at. Right. And one of the problems with it, and the reason a lot of the Hollywood critics don't like it, is because it's not fake. Hmm. It's real. These hmm. are three kids that were very real, rather typical of kids. They were kind of goofy. Mm -hmm. they, they got to be friends meeting in the principal's office. I know that scenario well, you know. And then they, they ended up, two of them in the military, and they got together in Europe. They were going to go tour Europe and have fun. Mm -hmm. And then they were on their way from Amsterdam to Paris, and some lunatic uh, jihadist guy comes on board with his AK-47, and he said, oh, hell no, and they took him down. Right. You know, and it's like, and then at the end, what really moved me 
was when the president of France is giving them the the, uh, the medal of honor or the society, whatever their honor, the highest award for mm -hmm. valor, French. And, and, and he's doing it all, and it was a real deal. It was a real ceremony. It actually happened. And a subtitle in English because he's doing it in French. And I thought, wow, ordinary men, when pressed into it, can achieve extraordinary things. Yes. And let's salute that. Let's salute the honor and the integrity of average, ordinary folk mm -hmm. that under the right set of circumstances can perform extraordinary things. And that reason is why I like that movie. Yeah. Was it perfect? No. no. But you know anything in life that is perfect other than Jessica Alba? <laughs> <laughs> or if my wife were here, Tom Brady? You know, I'm just saying. Uh, you went over there and you had a lot of, you, you had some fun, but you also had a few dangerous times over there. There was yeah. a little thing called Agent Orange that you ran into? Oh, yeah. And we didn't even know. Had no yeah. clue. You know, the, the nice thing about our government, they don't tell you when they're poisoning you. They just sort of let you figure it out later if you <laughs> make it. Every afternoon, and we, we thought this was really interesting, at around 4.30, 16.30, uh, for those who remember, mm -hmm. the winds would shift from onshore to offshore. Okay. And when they did, there would be this big blanket of stuff, smoke, haze, dirt, whatever, that just came right over us. And we thought, wow, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We didn't notice that. That was Agent Orange. Not all of it, but I mean, there was Agent Orange within that. Right. So we were getting spritzed with it every day. Thank you very much. And, wow. and thank you for the cancer. Yeah, yeah. My twin brother's got it. He's got neuropathy. He's 100% disabled right now yeah. because of Agent Orange. Yeah. See, I had more damage done to me by our side than the VC. Mm -hmm. VC couldn't shoot real straight, so it was good. Yeah. It was a good thing. Yeah. You know, I have to ask you this. If you had to do it all over again, would you do it again? If I knew what I know now? Yeah. Canada. Okay. Or Sweden. Okay. You know, I mean, if it was exactly the same scenario, mm -hmm. but it never is. It never will be. Mm -hmm. And so, how do you, how, how do you know? Yeah. How do you know? I mean, I, I met a, a friend of mine who's is a veteran, an army veteran from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He got his carotid artery sliced by shrapnel. He has the same kind of dumb luck I have. This happened as 10 feet from a medevac helicopter. So he dropped to the ground, they plugged it, they put him on the helicopter, they saved his life. Mm -hmm. Would he go back and do it again? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Got gotcha. you. But he, I know he was not pleased with the outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, just yeah. saying. I mean, it, it, you know, it's not like John Wayne, okay? No. It's not like the movies. You don't yeah. go cut and then go down to craft service and enjoy mm -hmm. the rest of the day. No, when it's there, the bodies are still there in the war. Right. I'm just saying. It's not rap. No. As a reviewer, have you ever, what was the best Vietnam movie that you ever saw? Um... Platoon? Platoon. Platoon. Okay. I lived it. Remember in the opening part of Platoon mm -hmm. where there's a bunch of old guy, the veterans getting ready to leave and a new mm -hmm. plane bringing the new guys in? Mm -hmm. I lived that. That is totally true. The, the old guys that have been there for a while are all messed up. They have nothing that even vaguely resembles a uniform left. Right. They're all just beat up and ragged. And the new guys are spitting polish and they're coming off the plane and they see the old guys. Mm -hmm. And you just feel the rush of, yeah. oh, okay, <laughs> what's this? Yeah, mm -hmm. Platoon, for that and other reasons. But, I mean, th they actually knew what they were talking about in that mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. Some of the other, the John Wayne version of it, the Green Berets. Mm -hmm. Never mind. Okay. Uh, John, may you rest in peace, but no, that yeah. wasn't one of your best. Did you ever see yourself as a hero? Heck no. I consider myself dumb and lucky. Mm-hmm. Hero. I don't know what's hero. But you made it. Huh? You made it. Made it back. Well, yeah, because like I said, they shot worse than I did, and <laughs> that's about it. I'm sure, you know, look, I went back to Vietnam about 15 years ago as a civilian. Mm -hmm. uh, one day tour, went over there. Okay. And the most friendly people I ran into were young military guys in Vietnam, which was no longer north and south. They were just Vietnamese. Mm -hmm. And they could tell I was an American and figuring, looking at my age, that I'd probably maybe been there before. Mm -hmm. And it was hilarious. We went and had a couple of beers together. We were talking and said, you know, your dad and I probably shot at each other. But, and they were, they were nice and friendly. And of course, they didn't have any weapons on them. But <laughs> How many stories did you leave out of the book? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was getting dangerous enough talking about Major Stupid. Uh, Major Stupid? 
What? You didn't know about Major Stupid? No, I didn't know about Major Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Major Stupid had a real problem. You okay. know, remember Frank Burns from MASH? Oh, God, Major Stupid. Well, this was the guy, I'm sure, that inspired that character. Mm -hmm. Because we would be, we were under a mortar attack, and he comes ripping down the street, street, our pathway, mm -hmm. with his headlights on going, fall in! And 100 voices out of nowhere, and I can't say this on right. the show, said, mm, mm -hmm. you, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, sir. Because mm -hmm. we're not, you were not going, you crazy? Mm -hmm. And I'm on guard duty one night, and the same lunatic, I'm on a post, and he comes up and illuminates the back of my head with his headlights. That, no, that's not in there, because I shot the headlights out. Mm -hmm. My colonel, it was another one of the times when my colonel took care of me, which was... <laughs> <laughs> But, wow. yeah, but that never happened. But it, it's in the, book. <laughs> in the book. How can we get our hands on those books? Uh, uh, well, simplest thing to remember is ronerwin.net. Okay. And then just click on any of the, it says books by Ron. And there you go. Okay. You know, and it's I, like seven ninety five. And again, 20% goes to help veterans. Okay. Because this isn't about me getting rich. Trust me. This is definitely not doing. Okay. Now, if you'd like to buy the film rights. <laughs> <laughs> Go we, have for it. we have Go a way. For we have in studio today uh -huh. uh, who's observing this program a, a person who's helping me write a screenplay for this. Excellent. Yes. And his name is? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, Rick Perry. Oh, Rick Perry. Rick. <laughs> Hi, Rick. How are you? <laughs> should be interesting to see how you put this together as a movie. Yeah, it should be. I don't know yeah. exactly how it's going to happen, but he's a really good writer. He's an award-winning writer, thank mm -hmm. God, because, you know, this thing is written by a stupid, dumb corporal. Could fool me. I thought it was good reading. Couldn't well, put it down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyhow, but, yeah, yeah he's, 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 got, he's working on it. Mm -hmm. You plan on having a book uh, signing eventually? I hadn't really considered that, but maybe eventually. I don't yeah, know. that would do well. See, first of all, I'm still doing revisions because I have, I've learned that I'm extremely capable of typos. Got gotcha. you. Okay, so we're now at a point where I think it's probably been reduced to a nearly acceptable level. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Ron, you have really put your heart into your books. Uh, uh, you're a good theater critic. Uh, of course, you did some work as an attorney. You're a publicist. You do a yeah. number of different things. But you served your country, and that is the one thing that a lot of people uh, we want to thank you for. When you serve your country, put that uniform on, it becomes a you become a different person in my eyes and in the eyes of a lot of other people. Well, it's, if you read this book, it's mm -hmm. not completely selfless. I understand. You know, my first tour to Asia, yes, which didn't involve getting shot at, well, not much, and uh, but it was. I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. I'm a young Marine PFC. I check into Fatima, Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And instead of a Quonset hut with 75 of my best friends, I get a semi-private room with a bunkie. Uh, then I find out we have maid service. Right. We get maid service. We don't have to make our beds. We don't have to shine our boots. We don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. We got maids to take care right. of this. Holy moly, this is the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. You know, and then every Sunday we got premium steaks cooked to order at the mess hall. Bring you. back some memories, man. You bring back some. I'm memories. just saying this. This was. <laughs> then they put bunky. me. Bunky. Yeah, bunky. <laughs> then they put. That's uh, somebody that shares a room. But yes, anyhow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then they put me on the ship. Yeah. An LPH, a helicopter landing platform helicopter. Yeah, Navy vessel, right? Navy. Uh, na yeah, well, they think it was. <laughs> and uh, Marine pilots, which we broke. Oh God. <laughs> well, they crashed too on the ship, so they were like not happy with our pilots. Right, I but <laughs> a lot of gray paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what we did is we sailed around Asia and mm -hmm. had nothing but a blast. Yes. I mean, I sailed into Hong Kong, and I go into a bar at the Opium Den Bar at the basement of the Hong Kong Hilton, which was really interesting because they had little private booths, mm -hmm. and every uh, intelligence agency, we had a CIA booth, we had the KGB booth, mm -hmm. we had the Chinese intelligence booth. They all got along. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 a couple of other guys from the ship had shown up, mm -hmm. and... Some guy sitting in a bar says, "Hey, got a second? Yeah, you're with the you're with that ship out there, right?" I go, "Yeah." He says, uh, "Louis, the uh, drinks on me tonight." Hi, by the way, I'm Bill Holton, <laughs> the movie star. Yes. Two years after he'd done Susie Wong, The World of Susie Wong, right. which I still own on DVD, I'm, I'll admit to it. Mm -hmm. And he says, "How many times?" I live in Hollywood. I don't meet eight listeners. I'm in Hong Kong. I meet Bill Holden. Not only that, he's buying an entire squadron of Marines drinks, mm -hmm. which was a bad move because you don't want to buy a squadron of Marines yeah. drinks. We started by 3 a.m. We were playing the drums because the band left. We were having a ball. It was, mm -hmm. it was a party. Yeah. And yeah. That, that was my first year in, in Asia. Gotcha. So when they said, you want to go back to Asia like a moron, I said, sure. Yeah. 
And I said, welcome to Vietnam. And I said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a whole, here's your six grenades, you're on your <laughs> hey. And your trusty <laughs> rifle. <laughs> trusty rifle, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we're done. And of course, day one. You yeah. read about day one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, I got killed, almost got killed by a Viet Cong rat. Tell me about, you told me, we got a few minutes, but tell me about that, that, that rat. You and that rat got to, I get was, to know each other. I was tired. I was ready to go to bed. <laughs> this is the rat story. No, this, this is the rat story. Day one in Vietnam. It could have been right. my last it day of the tour. Day, right. right. I lay down. I'm, I'm tired. I'm ready to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I lay down. Suddenly I feel, Earth I wake up right. and there's a giant rat staring me nose to nose. So I reach <laughs> over and it had to be a Viet Cong rat. Because what other rat would attack a Marine? I mean, so, I mean, rat with black PJs, a straw hat, it was terrible. And he, it's like this, so I reach <laughs> over and grab my bayonet, and right about here I realize what a really bad idea that was. Yeah, you could have st stabbed yourself, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I could just see the letter. Dear family, we're, <laughs> we're sorry to inform you that your <laughs> moron your son. Yeah, <laughs> moron son, right. Lasted one day, not mm -hmm. even a full day in mm -hmm. Vietnam, and then we can't give him a Purple Heart because it was self-inflicted. Right. Oh, well. But yeah. the rat left. Yeah. He went and found someplace else to sleep. Gotcha. But that was that was day one. That was me going, well, this isn't going to be another 200, 369 days of joy. <laughs> wow. Well, Ron, what's next for you? Hey, it's been a fun. Hey, always a pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. You keep, okay. I, you, you, I, first of all, I like your first name, but you keep me laughing every time I see you. You always got a good joke, and you always got yourself out there, and that's what makes it the way that you are. Thank, Thank you, Ron. You. Thank you. Pleasure's come mine. Back, need to come back again. You and I, a lot of folks don't know, you and I, you, you used to be the publicist for Crawford. Johnny Crawford. Johnny Crawford and the Rifleman. Yeah, right. Well, I still meeting. work a little bit. He's kind of out of the picture. He's, Give him my he, best place. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yes, please. You can set up an interview one day on this show. With, he was with a him. great, yeah, he's a great yeah. guy. Nice I, I go back to the Rifleman every day just to see, uh, hey, Paul. I, hey, is, Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's him. That's him. Indeed. Uh, and we want to thank uh, our sponsor, uh, Harvey Brandman and Photography as an Art. $100 discount for any photo package over $300. Call 818-954-9294. That's 818-954-9294 for more information. And tell them you heard about it right here on The Actors' Choice. Again, Ron, we want to thank you, Ron Irwin. Thank you very, very much for coming on down. Pleasure, thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. And we want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you the next time.